Good evening, everyone. How you all doing out there? I hope that your week was fabulous. Mine was too. And here we are, June 13th. Are we 13th? Yeah, 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 we're June 13th. Okay, so uh, my name is Katherine Davis right here at the New Rhythm Arts Center. And we say thank you for joining us pretty much every week where I feature uh, artists of Chicago uh, who I have met and performed throughout my years of my career. And I have some fabulous artists that I have worked with or ran into or conversated with. And I'm going to tell you about my uh, guests for this evening. But before that, I would like to say thank you to uh, Mayor Lori Lightfoot and Department of Cultural Affairs for um, um, the generous um, award that I received last year, 2020 Esteemed Artists Award. And I, I, from that award, I've been able to create so many different uh, projects and including uh, artists of Chicago, whether it's music or visual arts or dancing or um, uh, singing, uh, music, tap dancing, whatever we we are featuring all every everything that makes chicago what it is a profound city of uh, art of music of food of architecture of the beautiful parks we have lake michigan and so um again thank you so much for joining us um, let's see, Lawyers for Creative Arts, thank you so much for being in my life and helping me with uh, my songs that uh, needed uh, copyrights and everything. You came and helped me with that. And then uh, my other sponsors who helped to uh, uh, make this, all of this work. So, and of course, the New Rhythm Arts Center, we have Alicia Hempling, who is the founder director of New Rhythm Arts Center. And then we have Alex Robinson, who is our sound engineer, who is just fabulous, fabulous, fabulous. All of our artists who have been here, um, they all love you, Alex. So he's very special in our life. Um, let's see, it's a beautiful, sunshiny day. And uh, I have another one of my special guests, special friends with me this evening. And uh, I'm sure that most of you know who he is, uh, Mr. Greg McDaniel, E.G. McDaniel to some. <laughs> uh, I've been knowing him not, not since diapers, but maybe... Uh, 40 oh, years, through the 80s. Yeah. Yeah, from yeah. the 80s. All back. And yeah. I was his blues god mama. Amen. I'd, am I still your blues god mama? Yeah, absolutely. That'll never die. Okay. That'll All right. That'll never All die. Right. Okay. Lady, okay. You, you put me on the map. I put Thank you on you. the map. Thank you. Well, okay. Thank you so much, too, for mom. recognizing what is, what is, me. Because, you know, that's what this is yeah. about to me. It's about helping one another, in the, especially right. in, in music, uh, in the performing arts, but music, That's especially right. blues music. Yes, yes. Because we're the ones that don't get that type of recognition. This of, is true. And that's what my whole, you know, conversation is about. Why is it that we as blues artists we don't get those breaks like right. with the commercials and the movies and speaking parts right, and right. you know the big right. gigs that right. you know when something special is happening in Chicago right. some of us get it but we want more this is true we 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 want more of it we need more of it and the music industry that has the control over this we are saying to you that you have to release and share and see to it that you cover everybody, not just your picks. Yeah. You cover everybody because everybody has a talent. Everybody has, a, and, and they perform, and not Amen. just in nightclubs. Amen. Yeah. Okay. And since the pandemic, 
Yeah. All of that is gone. Yeah. For now. Yeah. Now the clubs are beginning it to open up, but there are a lot of performers who say they're not ready for that. Yeah. And so let's go back to you, Greg. Mm -hmm. We've been knowing each other for more than 30 years. Oh gosh. I met Close your to the dad. Point, but seriously, yeah. I met your dad. And so your dad is the one who opened the door for uh another style of music that was here before the Chicago, the what they call label Chicago blues. Your dad right. is an icon right. of Chicago and the world. Yeah. And so Greg McDaniel, E.G. McDaniel, would you share with us some of the, uh, some of your golden memories? Okay. Um... And remember, I want to read your bio, but I'm going to let you talk so they can hear your voice. Oh, no problem. No problem at all. Uh, to those that don't know me, uh, my name is Edward Gregory McDaniel uh, III. My father was actually Edward Floyd. My grandfather was Edward Jonathan. And uh, because of that, when we were all in the land of living together, we went by our middle names. Hence, Catherine knew my family and I was Greg. Uh, but when my dad died, I, I've been writing my name all along and I said, I'm gonna use it. So those that couldn't remember, it is EG. And that's why it makes <laughs> it easier. E. So to get rid of the myth and the confusion, that's what the whole EG is about. Um, my dad was wonderful. A lot of people don't understand because I talk about him a lot to friends and family. You want him to be remembered. I want him to be remembered, but it goes back to the Bible where they say, honor thy mother and thy father. Mm -hmm. And uh, my parents were both in show business. And uh, it's the only way I could give back because I was born into a family of eight. I was the eighth child. Um, eight? I was the eighth, number ocho. I was the oh, eighth. Oh, you were the baby? I was the baby. And uh, I am the baby. And uh, I have a sister now. She's going to be 90 next month. Mm -hmm. And that's my sister, Doris. Hey, if you're looking and listening, I love you, Doris. <laughs> and uh, that's, that's my heart. And uh, I love Doris. And uh, I was very fortunate to be as a young, young child experiencing my mother going to play. My mother was... Bessie Michelle McDaniel, and she went by Michelle McDaniel. And uh, my mother played down at the Drake, the Palmer House, uh, the Four Seasons, the she Gold played. Star Sardine Bar. She played piano. Mm -hmm. And the women in my mother's family played piano. Another auntie, Irma Thompson, uh, she also played piano. She was a great musician. Irma was, Irma was awesome. And she Irma didn't awesome. play, babe. She didn't play no mess. No, she was awesome. But so, so was my mother. My mother was like that too. They were women that, that they played through the war years. And my mother met my father playing with Cab Calloway. Uh, for those that don't know who Cab Calloway was in our history, he was in his day, he was the prince in his day. Go back and look up Cab Calloway. Uh, he had a lot of uh, music that was out. He was a band leader and he was a dancer that he was very smooth and he was on the scene big time. And my mother and my father met playing for him. My father got the call to play with Cab because Cab came here for the 1933 World's Fair. And uh, my dad was just a young man and he was playing in a band called the Rhythm Rascals. And now what instrument did your dad play? My dad played guitar. He mm -hmm. was guitar and he sang. And uh, he did a lot of orchestra music, a lot of pit crew. And uh, that's what basically got us through uh, the times through the 60s and the 70s, where my dad was doing a lot of uh, orchestra music. So if you went down to theaters like the auditorium or the Chicago theater, uh, you probably might have seen my dad play guitar. And... Uh, for those of us who are still around. Right, right, <laughs> right, right. Dad was born in 1910, and uh, he oh, left yeah. us in 1995. And my mother was born in 1911. And uh, 
she left us sadly in 1989. She was 79, mm-hmm. 78. And uh, my mother uh, was more militant about, you know, music and learning music. So I had to, I had to be careful of what I put on the turntable at home around my mother, you know, because uh, I liked a lot of Motown and she liked it, but she basically thought that, you know, Dinah Washington and, you know, uh, Sarah Vaughn and uh, Jimmy or uh, Billy or Eckstein and, you know, um, that was more appropriate music to listen to mm-hmm. for mm-hmm. her, you know, and uh, my dad, he a was lot more, of them thought like that. Yeah. My dad was more eclectic. He didn't mind, you know, he was always what's happening around the corner because he was a guitarist. Yeah. He could play all styles of music. He sure could. Blues, jazz, yeah. R&B. Oh yeah. Well, my dad had a lot of followers too, you know, mm-hmm. Walter Scott, uh, Carl Weathersby, Oh, you're talking about, yeah, yeah. the musicians of today that, yeah. still around. James everything. Wheeler, James. a lot of people, you know, and that's how I subsequently met a lot of those guys because uh, they were coming around and telling me, you know, what they're doing and sharing what they're doing. And, and that was on the north side circuit of Chicago. This was uh, when my dad was playing largely on the north side because uh, he had his band at the time. Now, uh, Whit, you came was, from Chicago. I come from the south side. The south side yeah. of Chicago. Yeah, okay. south side. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> we were uh, uh, living in, in Beverly and uh, from the 60s to uh, the early 70s. Then my folks went further out south and uh, my mom's doing. And then I came up here and uh, I went to college, went to Northwestern, graduated in 1980. And uh, pretty much just uh, you major? organizational behavior, which is now called industrial psychology. Mm-hmm. And um, for the most part, I pretty much got my sheepskin, but the only time I used it, I worked for CTA mm-hmm. for about 13 years. And mm-hmm. uh, I got tired of it. My hair was falling out. It was what I wanted to do. And what I, didn't want to I, I wanted to play music. I, I wanted to hang that. out with my dad. I wanted to play. And uh, now, do we have a recording of your dad, Alex? We have something of Floyd McDaniel, your dad, Greg McDaniel's dad. That's fine. Yeah. Yeah, this one's called A Raggedy Ride with the Four Blazes. All right. That he did even in the 40s. All right. So, our listening audience, listen in on us. And, Got some questions to ask. Put them on the chat line, okay? Any time of the day. A raggedy ride needs a dressed up walk. Do you hear what I say? We don't rattle and roll, rock and squeak. But maybe the brakes are just a little bit weak. Raggedy ride needs a dressed up walk. Any time of the day. Rubber wheel beats a rubber heel Any time of the day a Rubber wheel beats a rubber heel Do you hear what I say? Come pretty baby, ride with me We'll be as happy as can be Raggedy ride beats a dressed up walk Any time of the day
hear what I say Come bird liver Hit my flipper You won't quiver You won't shiver Every ride beats that ride Any time of the day I say Man, I remember I went on tour with uh, Floyd, Irwin, uh, S.P. Leary. We went over to uh, we went to Germany and yeah. and Austria, yeah, and Belgium. We yeah. toured over there, and your dad was just so easy to travel with, and yeah. his, you know, he was always. You know, I never, I never saw Floyd angry or upset no. about anything. He just, no. just blended right on in and was like whatever whatever you know and and he was so tasteful in his playing and everything yeah. and you're that way too oh i try i try uh, yeah <laughs> but you have you play with a lot can i read your bio this is sure. how i get my thrill well i get my thrill with having you here but i get you. even a better thrill thank you by reading about you all right uh, let's see. Someone says the incredible E.G. McDaniel biography. I didn't write that. You don't have to. You're not supposed to. Someone <laughs> else saying this about you, which is wonderful. I didn't write that. It says E.G.'s biography. Why do they call Greg McDaniel a son of the blues? Because he is the son of a Chicago blues icon, guitarist Floyd McDaniel and Bessie Jackson, a singer and jazz pianist. The senior McDaniel started singing with the legendary Ink Spots in 1930 and played guitar with such greats as Cab Galloway, like you said, Fats Waller, Billie Holiday. Floyd McDaniel went on to fame in the 40s and 50s by forming his own band, The Four Blazes. His contemporaries were such jazz greats as Dizzy Gillespie and Ella Fitzgerald. And he was still a celebrated soloist with the blues swingers when he died at the age of 80. Now learning at his father's knee, Greg McDaniel's career was launched at the age of seven when he started performing on stage with his father. But Greg is now recognized in his own right as a seasoned bass player and appears with big name bands across the US and Canada and abroad. One lesson my father taught me, Greg says, is to be a good listener whenever I work with another artist my dad used to say, the blues is about a feeling. Amen. If I can get into the head and the heart of what my fellow performers are feeling, then I can get back up with the kind of bass playing they need. Let me see, then I can back them up with the kind of bass playing they need. Thanks to my dad, Greg says, I was able to launch my own career when my dad introduced me to Bither Smith. Oh, big name Bither. Who are famous. Then after touring Europe with Bither Smith and the Night Riders in 97, 1997, Greg appeared on Bither Smith CD all night long. Mm -hmm. The presence of Greg's bass has empowered such bands as Eddie the Chief, Clearwater, yeah. Brothers of Groove, Patty McCullough Band, Bumblebee Bob and the Stingers, and Mississippi Heat. And it's added on since then oh god that was i think that was done around 2004 since then i played with so many different people tell but, us about that um well let's see you know as i always say the working musician you have 30 days in a month and really you only have eight days in a month devoted just to weekends so what do you do during the other days mm -hmm. when you try to find work well, you try restaurants, you try everything you can. You try duets, trios, and uh, I ended up uh, meeting some really wonderful people along the way, including yourself, who, yes, it's true, <laughs> I call her my blues godmother, and if you want me to talk about that before I finish all this other I stuff. I want you to talk about yourself. Talk about myself. Boast. Well, That's this is... This is about myself <laughs> boasting with you. Okay. And 
I wouldn't really be, have been on the map if it weren't for this lady, Catherine Davis. Uh, those of you that are watching, uh, she was awesome. She was the only one, and I do mean the only one, of my dad's friends that reached back and after my dad died and said, come on, we're going to go play. We're going to go meet some people. And she's taken me to Europe. She's taken me to Japan. Uh, she's introduced me to uh, oh, copious amounts of artists that I, I would have probably, if I left on my own, it would take a long time for me to meet and play with. But uh, she used to push me in front of him and go, let him play. And uh, I have her also to thank about that. That's not mentioned in my bio because that was written by someone else. Uh, Rob Pasenko. Yeah. He wrote all that, but. Uh, but I would, I went according to your style of playing too, because I mean, like I said, you yeah, were pleasant true. to work with like your dad, that's true. but you have a style of playing with your bass that is unique. You can play all styles of music. You can play blues, you can play jazz, you can play gospel yeah. and R&B yeah. and you a funker. You know how to <laughs> funk it up and uh, uh, rock yeah, music. Yeah, yeah, you, rock I mean, music rock, too, you everything. play all, you can go. Punk, everything, anything, you know, there was a surf. And you could sing. Yeah, I can sing. Even I don't you're sing shy much. About I'm that. shy about it, but I can sing and you know, there was a surgence in the 80s. There was a bar that was basically almost down the street from here. It was known called Biddy Mulligans. Oh, yeah. I'll share and you everybody was always in the, if you were anywhere in Evanston or Rogers Park in those years, you were in Biddy Mulligans, you know. Mm -hmm. And I had met this guy. He was awesome. And uh, his name was Oswa Gregory. And he had a band called Oswald Gregory and the Enforcers. And he says, you play reggae? And I said, well, no, not really, but I'm willing to learn. You hang out with me, I'll teach you. And he took me under his wing and I played for him for three years. And I mean, he was an amazing man. And through that, I met Kevon. Oh man, I met so many people, uh, Ron Prince, I met uh, uh, um, Joe, the bass player. Joe was amazing. Uh, uh, we had the wild hair. Yeah, and, uh, they were taking me everywhere. And, and, uh, and that's why I, I busted out Chainsaw when we were doing the... Uh, Chainsaw, Chainsaw DuPont. Chainsaw DuPont. When we were doing the, the jam every Tuesday at uh, Bill's Blues, because Chainsaw had that's cut all Chainsaw. his locks off. And wanted to play the blues, and Chainsaw was playing some heavy-duty reggae. For those that don't know, but I had to give—I have to give that shout out because this was my world. This was what was going on, and I was trying to put my foot everywhere just to learn because I don't read music. I play totally by ear. Mm -hmm. And if people, which I've had many, are willing to show me, I'm willing to listen. I'm not—I'm not too proud. And I've had a lot of friends along the way. Uh, numerous to mention uh, that have shown me the way. So I can't say I did it completely by myself. I had a lot of help from some good people and some good friends. He is one of Chicago's own great blues players that can solo and it makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Thank it's you. true. When he takes a solo, he can make sense when he's playing. He's telling a story. And that's what it's about. That's what it's about. And you know yourself. For me, it's like that bass I hear in a song when I'm writing my songs or whatever, or I'm singing someone else's mm -hmm. covering someone else's song. Mm -hmm. The first thing I hear is a bass. Yeah, you do. That's true. And I come, I come to you. That's true. Or whoever I'm working with, you I do. go to the bass player. She goes to the bass player. That's that's very and, true. And I hear the bass line first. And you will you will hum it to me. You will say, play me this, put me in this, and I will try my best to do it. I'll say, what key? T tell me uh, what, what key? is the sound in this key. Yes, ma'am. And yes, I always go, I can go anywhere. That's right. <laughs> All day. And you do a beautiful job at it. We've had some wonderful experiences, namely the boat. I miss the boat. Don't you miss the boat? The Odyssey. 
Oh, yeah. I miss the boat. They're opening up. Are they really? I think they're open now. The Odyssey. Yeah. The the, the cruise ships right at Navy Pier. Yeah. yeah. That's that, I got I got some connections there too. Okay. All right. What's that, Alex? On the fourth, okay. On the fourth of, 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 of July, I think, right? Okay, yeah. yeah. All right. So what we got next? Who you because I know um, you work oh, with man, a lot well, of know, musicians. A lot of musicians uh I could pay homage to three up front, I wanna say, who helped shape me. One is who doesn't get much recognition. And that's Anthony Palmer. Anthony Palmer yeah. is amazing. I mean, those of us who've been He's blessed been... to be touched by him. Another legend. The man is a Canada. genius. He sure is. He's a genius. He downplays it, but he's a walking catalog of music. And just for me playing with him since 97, he's enriched my bass playing. And he's also a great bass player, too. I shouldn't leak that out because now he's going to get bass jobs. But he's he's great and uh, just a, a terrific musician. The other person in that same sentence is Billy Branch. Mm -hmm. Billy Branch is amazing. And um, Billy Branch has, has shown me the way uh, in the blues and over the years and talking and, and sharing. And You worked with Billy. Yeah, Billy is amazing. Billy's come and worked with all of us. He's done a lot of good he things. Is, he's, a, he's a teacher supreme. And uh, the third person, I can't let this go, uh, is John Primer. Mm -hmm. uh, and in that same sentence, my dearly departed friend, uh, Eddie Taylor Jr. Yes. Yeah. Uh, amazing people. And if you, you want to know anything about the blues, uh, talk to those people because they will tell you. But there, there's so many people that are great and I could, I could spend like <laughs> be here next year yeah. telling you about all these people that I've had the pleasure of playing with and running into. Yes. Yes. You but have. Uh, they're the ones, they are the ones. So you remember when we recorded on Mississippi heat's album? I do. These men look good, these to, men me look that good I wrote. to me. Yeah. You wrote that. We don't have that with us today, but what do you have next that we can listen um, to? And I have some excerpts. I wanted to talk about my history a little bit with Bither Smith. I also play with Jimmy Burns. I've had longevity with both of them. Uh, Bither started me out when I was 14 and uh, had me playing with him on and off until I got to be over 21. And then he had people regularly, but I would fill in, in and out. And, and I didn't really start to solidify to play with him as a regular chaired bass player, shall I say, until about 90, five about 95 just before my dad died because he came to my dad and he says i need a bass player and my dad like Catherine, take my son <laughs> 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 so you know and of course that lends itself because everybody was on delmark so i got a lot of recordings under my belt through delmark mm -hmm. and uh playing with biter was an experience too because he's the only one that kept me out of the United States. I, I mean, wow. I thought I was going to have to move to Canada. And at one point I thought I was going to have to move to Italy because this wasn't when you went to Europe for a couple of days. I think the longest I spent with Bither in Europe was probably about six months. Wow. And uh, I didn't think I was going to come home. I was like, I was actually getting like, wow, well, I want to go home. <laughs> you want to go home. I, I miss America. I want to go home, you know, but it was an experience and we had a great time. I'm not going to say we didn't going back and forth to Amsterdam, Switzerland, Belgium, I mean, Germany, and it's things that they don't teach you in school. You don't, you don't learn about these, these beautiful things that you will encounter in school. I mean, mm -hmm. it's, you really learn from going abroad that it's one man's version, which is an editor of the textbook, mm -hmm. you know, it goes like what Gershwin said, but well, that ain't necessarily so. It's true. You have to go and experience it for yourself to understand everybody's pretty much about the same, mm -hmm. you know, everybody's pretty much about the same. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, um, I feel blessed mm -hmm. 
that I've had those golden opportunities and uh, I wished I had more of them now, but uh, things have changed. Um, like what was it like with uh, performing with Eddie Clearwater? Eddie Clearwater was amazing. <laughs> Eddie was uh, um, the chief. The chief. He was the chief. Yeah. Eddie was the chief. And the memories of just being out on the blues scene and yeah, every place yeah. was vibrant and alive. Yeah, and yeah. The musicians were performing at their best. Oh. And the crowds of people from around the world was mm. in clubs. It was just, it, it was, you could just go from one blues club to another blues club, yeah, yeah. south side, north side, yeah, yeah. And, and west side too. Yeah, yeah. Um, but for the west side, it was a, di a different little vibe. Yeah. But I, I didn't get a chance to go to the west side as much. I did go, but I was mostly like the north side girl. But anyway, let's go back to you. What do we have next as far as uh, for, to, for us to listen to? Because I know we have an audience who wants to dance. Remember, this is uh, uh, our evening of uh, performance and interviews with some of my favorite artists. Today, this evening, we have E.G. McDaniel, Chicago Zone, and this is all sponsored by uh, Department of Culture Affairs and Mayor Lori Lightfoot. I wrote her a letter, a thank you letter, too. I'm waiting for a reply back. That's anyway, awesome. what awesome. do we have, Alex? What do we have for... Uh... Uh, I'd like to do uh, uh, Bytha Smith, since we were talking about him, uh, Messing with the Kid. This was done in 2013. Uh, live at Lucerne and when you went to Switzerland. Switzerland and when you went to uh, Lucerne you stayed there for a whole week and you played in the casino you played like three days uh, in the in the casino there were two parts and the one part was like the dining area with the stage and the other part was like the theater part which was nice. And you played there for like three days mm -hmm. and uh, it was back then. And uh, Byther was, was, was an amazing man. He's still with us, but he can't play anymore. Yeah. But I'd All like right. to pay homage to him. So what do we have? Uh, this one's called uh, messing with the kid. I believe that's a junior Wales, ain't it? Huh? Oh, you got judge your honor going. Okay. That's fine. I thought you had to lie on this one. Can I talk a little bit about this? Uh, Not ready. Oh, I'm telling you, we still talk? Oh, oh. Well, I just want to say, while I was playing, give you a little bit. Biter was his own musician. Biter, to me, was a lot like the more modern Magic Sam. He was more Southside dance. He put the groove in music. He played old blues too, but he was amazing. He uh, started out he was the bass player in the late 1950s for buddy guy and junior wells so they were all there together with sp Leary playing drums and they were like the rhythm section that would go floating around and and then he switched to guitar you know and going back his cousin was jb lenore who wrote mama talk to your daughter and uh, he, he borrowed from a lot of that, but what a wonderful man. All right, so I know you all are up there dancing on the dance floor now. Come on. I can feel your energy. I feel your vibes. I know you up there. Man, don't you ever dance. make me mad. Everything is open up now, and I know some of us are still not ready to go out, but you can party at home. To break your door with the left and right. Oh, my God. 
try that on the Del Mar Blues show. Blues on the Moon. Blues on the Moon. Yeah. On Del Mar. On Del Mar take that away from you or me that's the blues so tell me this mm -hmm. had you ever thought about leaving chicago and going overseas to live because a lot of artists did do that yeah i thought about it at one time i did honestly i thought if i went anywhere it would probably be amsterdam <laughs> i a like amsterdam <laughs> a lot of them do yeah but uh i know from being abroad a lot there's no place like home i mean the things you can do here you can't necessarily do in europe right and you realize that and it's like oh wow i had that freedom to do back at home mm -hmm. so i'll stay home and i'll travel when i can but uh well, why do you suppose artists wanted to go overseas to live because of oh they appreciate music different types of treatment no they well that too that's part of the treatment over in europe they appreciate the blues our blues music far much better than we do mm -hmm. we're jaded i will say that i gotta be honest folks we're jaded because we got everything mm -hmm. we got a basket full of everything and they don't have that you know, it's our culture and we have it every day. So we're used to it. It's like anything. Well, we didn't know the importance of it. Right. I mean, we knew it was important, but we didn't know it was important to the world. Right. We knew it was important to us. Right. Right. Very. Well, it's important to us, but this music is the thing is that what I'm trying to say is that here, if you say, like, go down to the Kingston Mines, you got a lot of people there. Everybody's socializing, everybody drinking, everybody. You go to Europe, people come to watch you play. Their eyes thousands, are glued by the thousands. Of thousands. They're glued to see you play. It's not, let me go get a drink. Let me talk to my buddy. Let me do this. No, we can talk to our friends anytime. They want to listen to you. They want to hear what you got because they don't have, they may have people there playing the blues, but it's not from here. It's not the same thing. Mm -hmm. It's not. They can play it, but it's not the same. It's not the same. So now if they were to call you and say, Greg, we got a gig in London and we need you for we need you for the week. 
and uh, the pay is like 20 grand for a week. Would you take it? Sure would. <laughs> Dad didn't raise no food. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> you know I'd take it in a heartbeat. <laughs> but that's just... I got a feeling it's going to go that way too. Because oh, Yes, indeed. I hope it does because, you know, we need, we all need some love. We need love real bad right now. Yeah. You know, we have it. It's just that we got to like, we need, we need to get back reconfigure to reconfigure some things and yeah. share it, you know, not be afraid. Cause we've been, put, we've been put into this fear factor. We were already in fear in other ways, but now it's yeah. like, we're so traumatized mm. now we don't, you know, yeah. but it's, it's, you, if you if your heart is there, like SP, when SP was passing away, yeah. he had his drums in his hands in the hospital bed. Right. He was in his last That's breath. Right. That's right. And he said, I'm going out like I'm going this. going out like this. You know. Yes, he did. Yeah. A lot of musicians did that. Yeah. And I, I remember when I was like, I don't want to sing anymore. I'm dead. And we went through that too. We yeah. didn't, we just felt like it was like all that we had worked for. It was like, was it all in for, vain right, right. or whatever? But, it sat us all down, you know? Yeah. And, and but, but what we accumulated through all that time that we gave, mm -hmm. it, it was, we had time to think, sit down and think about mm -hmm. it and say, Hey, I gave a lot. I contributed a lot to the music mm -hmm. industry. Mm -hmm. So I am valuable. Yeah. And yeah. it's like, you have to keep being out here. And in this industry, yeah. you got to, the yeah. social media, you got to stay out here. Yeah. Yeah. You got to keep yeah. your name out here. Yeah. Yeah. You got to yeah. be seen in the clubs. Yeah. You had to be yeah. seen. That's why you like yeah. the clubs, seeing you musicians was always hanging out hanging to be out, seen, see if they seen, could jam, let sit you in know I'm or still like here. That. Yeah. I'm still here. Yeah. And so th now we have to do this all over again for the ones who kind of trust to come out. And also for the people that have missed us. That have missed us. want to get back and, and yes. hear good music again, you know. Right, because like right now, backyard parties are more valuable than than anything Absolutely. you know backyard parties Absolutely. because you got to select the audience and then you spread it out not mm -hmm. inside right but we we're coming out again and i'm i'm you know i'm gonna i'm gonna do it again so if i get a call to go to japan i'm gonna go to japan if i get a call to get go out there and fly get away <laughs> <laughs> you know but look so what what else do you have like in your music bag i see you came in with big I had a bag yeah, of CDs okay. that these are all CDs you're on. These are all CDs I'm on. I'm on. Uh, Whoa, show it. Show the audience. Oh my God. Just oh, pull the bag over and, and the let them. Over, it's, I, I don't know. I don't know if you can see it. But, Let's um, see. These are all people that I've played with and, and gone on tour with. And, Eddie Shaw. Uh, Eddie Shaw's in here because we. We did. We worked with Demetri Taylor. Uh, the Taylor family is very talented. Yeah. And those that don't know, and I, I always have to shout out this because it's a part of our history. The Taylor family is largely linked to the Burns family. Jimmy Burns, uh, who I've had the pleasure of being his bass player since 2005, mm -hmm. and uh, learned a lot from Jimmy Burns too. And uh, uh, they are the nieces and nephews of Jimmy Burns. And uh, Eddie Taylor Jr. was a, a great friend of mine. And mm -hmm. even though he was younger than me, he was a great mentor to me mm -hmm. because he was more steeply rooted in the blues, traditional blues, uh, than I was. And uh, sad for you. Eddie could play anything he wanted, but he, he, he wanted to keep it close to the vest because, of course, he, um, like, you know, he was a child of his father, who was also a great musician. And he has siblings who were great. And Demetria Taylor, uh, I recorded on her first CD, which was a Del Mar. And Demetria Taylor has come a long way. She's yeah. she's very entertaining. She's very good. Wonderful voice. You know, and uh, she's out here playing. Yeah, she's out here playing. Yeah. And uh, I have uh, have one of her songs, and I, I had the pleasure of playing her. But on the CD, there were a lot of people that that worked on that CD with her including myself and you had Mike Wheeler, you had, uh, wow. 
Luke Pytel. You had a whole bunch of people, big time. Sarah, um, Eddie I'm Shaw. Sarah. Uh, the list goes on and on and on. But, you know, if you buy the CD, you'll see it. Bonnie Lee. You know, uh, Bonnie Lee's gone, yeah. Willie Kent. Willie Kent. These were all people that... Uh, James Wheeler. James Wheeler, who had a profound uh, impact on, on how I play and how I choose to play and, and what I play. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, amazing, amazing musicians. I mean, there's there's so many. Chico Banks, he's no longer here with us. And uh, one I want to give a shout out to, um, again, uh, I see it on Facebook and I think it gets misconstrued, but people, if you're listening to me, take uh, umbrage uh, for Merle Perkins because Merle Perkins, yeah. what he's basically saying in all of his... Uh, text is that he doesn't want to be forgotten. He's, he's an elder uh, blues player. And when he was out here, he was a pioneer. He weathered some storms that I wouldn't want to go through to get out here. But you got to remember long before drummers out here were playing with double bass, Merle was the first Mm -hmm. and he doesn't feel like he gets the credit. And that's why he has these tempered, should I say flavored text? Because basically bottom line, he is in his own way. He's just saying, don't forget me. And don't forget that I exist because uh, he tried. He was a band leader. Uh, I got into Eddie Clearwater because of Merle. Mm -hmm. And uh, at that time, uh, Tom Holland was playing. And, and so we were Eddie Clearwater's band and um, Merle was, was a drummer. He was a great drummer. And uh, he's just basically saying he doesn't want to be forgotten. And I sit back and I watch and I see what he writes. And some people get upset about it because they don't understand which direction he's coming from. And uh, but that's the direction. But basically, that's OK. He's no, that's go. still not in a reason yeah. to stop an artist from right. s- being successful. Right. Or, you know, trying to uh, right. stop them from creating that music. That's that's right. that's judging you. Right for the wrong reasons. Right. Absolutely. You know? And so I was going to ask you too about like with the clubs that was happening back in the eighties and nineties, we let me, I remember Eddie Clearwater had his club on Milwaukee. Avenue, oh yeah. Re- Reservation and, blues. And James Cotton had his yeah. club. James Cotton. Yeah. He had Co- his Coco, Coco Taylor, Taylor had hugs. down on division street. And uh, who else, who else had their oh, own A lot club? of people. Um, um, Arthur Duncan had the Back Scratchers Social Club uh-huh. on the West Side. Little Arthur, uh, little Arthur Duncan, yeah. yeah. And what about the brother? Two brothers. One played bass, and uh, oh, Willie. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, uh, um, Dave Meyer, Dave Lewis Meyer. and Lewis Meyer. Yeah, I I have Dave to thank. God bless him wherever he is. Uh, he was the one that got me to play with uh, Robert Junior Lockwood. Mm-hmm. That's a mean feat to say that, you know, you played with the son of one of the pioneers of blues, which Robert Jr. Lockwood was the stepson of uh, 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 Robert Johnson, mm-hmm. you know, who wrote Sweet Home Chicago, which is the town that we live in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Red Hots, he had a lot of them. So, uh, you know, playing with people like this was, alongside people like that was was an honor for me because uh, that's the blues. That's blues. That, is, that was the blues. And I'm, it's a great honor to mm-hmm. be part of that. Yeah. Those moments of that, it's now, it's in our memories. Right. It's in our hearts. And right. we could tell these stories about right. what we saw. Because right. a lot of people nowadays, they don't, or people who are like doing, want to yeah. know, yeah. they don't really know who to go to. Right. And so here we are, like I tell people, the nursing homes, well, because of the pandemic, you haven't had a chance to go and sit and talk with, uh, people who were in the music business because a lot of them now are in nursing homes. So yeah. I think but, Sammy Fender's like that now. Sammy Fender, man. man he was man, he was a man. He played with AC Reed. What about when his I met girlfriend? Him. Uh Sugar Baby. Oh, Sugar Baby, yeah. The Where bass player. Sugar, Sugar Baby. Baby, she's awesome. Uh and you were saying who? Uh Sambo and and and, Sambo. and uh he's gone. He's no longer with us either. But Sambo and and uh uh Sammy Fender were playing with AC Reed when I met them. Mm-hmm. And of all places, AC. I met them in France. 
not in Chicago. And it was like, talk about how universal blues is. And I remember Sambo, you know, he, he's also another one that, that helped mold my career because he took me down into the circuit, shall we say, the circuit. Here <laughs> in Chicago, Ooh. and he had me playing in the subway. He had me playing on the street, but Sambo knew everybody. Uh, for those who don't know, Sambo's real name was Arthur Irby, and uh, Sambo was to me a treasure. I mean, mm -hmm. if you didn't know him, you'd think, "Well, okay, yeah, right." But you had to get to know him, and I'll tell you, he introduced me to a lot of people without him i would not have met leon mcneil nolan struck king eddie uh eddie king these are all people uh, uh that were at one time part of chicago blues and they were playing on the south side and uh in those days when you played you they told you to be at the gig at 9 30. <laughs> You didn't start the gig until like close to midnight and you didn't stop until like five thirty, six o'clock in the morning. Those were the days. And, and they locked the door. You couldn't get out. You had to play. <laughs> they fed you, but you had to play. Wow. Yeah. What, what we got next, Alex? Um, I don't know. Let's see. Uh, we got some Jimmy Burns. And Alex, uh, tell us, do we have some, we got some followers or viewers? We've got, uh, we've got Stephen Dolan. Hey, Steve Dolan. Hey, Steve. Hey. And we've got Rusty. Hey, Russ. Shout out to Rusty. Siren Records out there. And uh, Alice Weinstein. Alice. Hey, Alice. Hey, Alice. And then, let's see, Richard Wilcox. Hey, Richard. Hey, Richard. And Tom, All yeah. Right. Nice meeting you, Tom. Yeah, that would be great. All righty. Yeah, Jimmy Burns is another one who, you know, I, I, I got to give credit to because uh, he's taken me all over and had me out here. And uh, we went to Japan. Went to Japan, went to Europe, all over Europe. Oh, and then he stopped taking me, Jimmy. Plants. You better start taking me back to Europe. That's if you're right, watching. Jimmy. You you hear him? <laughs> Come on now. Me too. This is your no. sound. This is your sound. Me, Brian, and Tony. I'm talking to you. I love you, Jimmy. Bus train or plane Leaving you walking Ain't got time for bus train or plane And you see old dog under the house. He's a teasers. The yeah. up. Jimmy Burns. Oh, These are I love blocks. Jimmy. Jeez. You see old dog under the house. Don't mess with him. He ain't going to raise no hell. He's going to. 
Ain't gonna do a damn yeah. thing. Yeah. Uh, That's me. I don't know what you're doing when you keep hanging around the window. barbecue person all right i'd like to uh, also give a shout out to uh barry dolan's because barry dolan's was responsible for having me on more blues fest and more uh he recognized you more yeah on uh and working with the city and and uh he also helped put me out there too which i'm greatly thankful to him for that too i mean yeah he you helped know, me with the. Uh, he has so many people that had so many people. He doesn't work down there anymore. He's retired, but he had so many people to pick and choose from. And I was grateful that he chose me. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm, I got to mm -hmm. thank him for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But uh, all in all about my career, I mean, uh, uh, yeah, it, it's been a, an exciting time. And you come from a family of musicians famous musicians oh yeah bo Girl, diddley was names. my cousin uh bo, bo diddley, diddley was ellis mcdaniel that was my second cousin on my dad's side uh marshall thompson as well as terry thompson uh they're my cousins from my mother's side uh of the marshall, Sh marshall thompson. thompson leader and founder of the shy lights last living one left and uh marshall yeah those are my relatives lights. marshall marshall is uh still out there kicking and going strong and, um, you know, it was all, people have to understand that w where we come from, our family, as old as our family members are, uh, in the 1920s, 1930s, we were basically only allowed to get as far as high school, if that, and uh, there wasn't much work out there. So, you know, it was either jobs. work on the railroad, work yeah, in the stockyard, or you try to get, you know, into entertainment. And my father chose entertainment as well as my mother. And you can make more money by the playing out on the streets and they drop money in the buckets. Well, that too, but money that way. my dad played for Al Capone. So it didn't hurt him that much because he was doing all the speakeasies and that's mm -hmm. what they wanted. They wanted hot music back then. And people who were not going to, you know, if you notice really in, in the history you don't hear too, about too many black people talking out against Al Capone. No, you don't. Well, there's a reason for it. I know my, my father was part of that too. That's right. He employed a lot of us yeah. to work. And uh, why are we going to tell on somebody that's taking care of us and putting, you know, a roof over our head and food on our table? And treating us better. I think so. Yeah. I think we're going to do what he wants us to do. So... Mm -hmm. You know, and my dad used to tell me stories about that. And it, it made me appreciate, you know, a lot of people say, man, you're the hardest working person in the blues, man. You're everywhere. Well, the work ethic comes from my mother, my father, truthfully. And that was, hey, you know, get out there, leave something. Because as my mother used to put it, what did you do with that hash mark between the time you were born and the time you will die? That hash tells your whole life right there. And that's the whole thing. Get out there and do it. No matter what, just do it, you know? And so coming out and uh, we're now opening back up to everything um, with the clubs and the restaurants and all that. What do you see for yourself in the music business? Are you gonna come back? Oh, you already, I'm already got some out. gigs. Yeah, I've got, got some, some gigs, gigs I've got coming some, up mm -hmm. now. But I'm taking it slow. Mm -hmm, I'm mm -hmm. trying to feel it out just like everyone else. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. But I'm ready. Yeah. Whoever needs me, I'll be yeah. happy to play for you. Yeah. 
So I again, I ask that for the music industry or whoever it is that you have connections to, uh, you know, like including us in on the music scene and doing movies and commercials and all that, uh, uh, include us because, you know, how do you think that makes us feel when we watch a commercial and we hear some blues playing and it's something <laughs> that sounds like it came from out of space. I know, I know too many blues artists and uh, they, whether they're singing or playing an instrument, I know too many of them that's alive and that can play. Yeah. And to include us, give us some speaking parts in movies as yeah. well. Yeah. You know, treat us, yeah. you know, treat us fair, treat us because Everything that is out here that's playing that comes from the blues that's anyway. Right. That's right. And um no, that's just, right. we're just asking, include us. And 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 if you feel like you can't include us, then don't play no blues. <laughs> okay, don't play no blues because that means you don't know enough about it. Okay. I might be messing myself up, but I don't give a care. But if you don't know enough about it. Leave it alone, okay? <laughs> and for the ones who do know about it, get out there. Get out there. Please get free. out there. Put we us, need you. Put us, include us in that. In the movie industry, Tyler Perry, who else? I'm telling you. Oprah Winfrey. I'm telling you. Talk shows, the I'm morning talk shows, afternoon right. talk shows in Chicago. Right. We're out here. That's right. Okay? Include us. That's all we ask. Just include us because we got knowledge. We got the blues in the schools. Blues Ooh, in the yeah, schools. Big time. I mean, like now with the schools, yeah. they're looking to the performing arts to help save these universities, the learning institutions. They're, they're looking for artists who have the who know how to reach these, especially the children, yeah, yeah. know how to reach the children yeah, by yeah. playing music yeah, or by yeah. singing to them or reciting poetry yeah, or yeah. poetry slam or yeah. hip hop, all of that. It's a lot to the dancing. It's a lot to it yeah, yeah. that we have right here in Chicago. Where's the tap dancers? Where are the <laughs> violinists in Chicago? I know it's more than one or two uh, violinists. I'm, and I'm speaking on African-Americans mm -hmm, mm -hmm. on this one because there's plenty of them out here, but where are they? Yeah. And that's who I want. Yeah. You know, I, I, I want to know who you are and I want you to, Come and Come contact us because I'm now. I forgot to say my PayPal account is uh mate soul at aol.com. Your PayPal account is what Mac Daddy Fever at Gmail, but it also is at PayPal as well. And that's right. And your contributions uh to uh help to preserve us and to keep us going in whatever our endeavors are. In always need bass together. strings, always. Always, always, always. And I always love to do interviews with artists and, you know, finding out who they are and what they're about and bringing them to you so that you can enjoy them on this lovely sub Sunday evening, every Sunday evening. Now, next week, I'm going to have Tommy McCracken. Tommy. As a guest for, for Father's Day. Tommy yeah, McCracken. So, Tommy. Yeah. But again, thank you so much, Mayor Lori Lightfoot, Department of Culture Affairs. The, actually, that's who Department of Culture Affairs ha, has, has been in my life all these many years and believed in me and what my what my mission was, my That's goals. That's why I gave the shout out to Barry. We need more people like Barry working back. Working with youth, working with people Man. and bringing them out. Yeah. And so yeah. I say thank you all so much. E.G., I thank you so much. Thanks for having me. I appreciate and it. And I'm going to have you come back. Oh, please. As our guest. And hopefully we have a band. Alicia, we're going to have, because you're opening up when? we open opening up. July 3rd is the first performance, and who do you have performing? Yoko Noge, Yoko Noge will be I'll here. play with Yoko July too. 3rd, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. we had her here as our guest as well. Yeah. So uh, New Rhythm Arts Center is opening to uh, all kinds of events to uh, with live performances, and if you come here and see New Rhythm Arts Center, you see it's a beautiful facility with lots of wonderful energy, good energy, and uh, we 
ask you to come and just be with us and uh, have fun with us because we need it. We've all been traumatized, right? This COVID right. is no joke. <clears throat> so now we say thank you all so much. E.G. and I, we're going to have some sushi. And uh, in Oak, and where? In uh, Evanston. Evanston, right next we're gonna door. We're going to have some sushi. I just want to say, everybody who I didn't mention, I love you all. You all know who you are. And thank you for being a part of my life. Trust me when I yeah. tell you. Thank you. All right.